Good morning. And it's not a great morning, but it's Monday, August 5th. And yes, the Gary uh, went out of town crash is happening <laughs> and it's still going on. Um, this, you know, I, I would say sign up for the newsletter, but the newsletter is not going to protect your portfolio because you shouldn't be following a douche on the internet and you shouldn't be listening to somebody. I've made some bad trades here of, of recent. Um, and, and, and I'll go over kind of what I learned about these things because I do journal my own trades and, and, and the main thing is patience, patience. But this is what I put out on Friday and I did it while sitting in bed because I was working at a soccer game and I didn't have a lot of time, but I kind of went over the, the, the few things that I saw that, that would tell you, Hey, we're looking at, at, at a pullback here and, and, and there's clear signs. So what do you have? Seasonality. Well, August, we said it. July was a good month. Well, it was a good month for the first two weeks. Then we started to see some weakness. Okay? So, you know, again, for the past two years, we've seen October lows turn to great rallies through the end of the year. And 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 so I, I said, hey, we're going to maybe see something like that as well. And I've been putting it in the newsletter. Bond rates. The, the 10-year bond has been falling. Um, and the, the Fed hasn't, hasn't been reducing rates. The 10-year the has been falling for some reason. Well, turns out that might probably be Japan. And, and, and Japan is probably selling a bunch of our bonds. So the, the actual rate comes down. It's below 4%. Um, that's, we might actually be in a situation where bad news is bad news. That's good for the market, bad for, for the actual price of stuff. But again, good for the market because that turns out to be the, the right thing to do. Now we've got a weak consumer. You saw it with McDonald's. You saw it with the $5 uh, thing that has been in there. Starbucks. We saw a weak consumer. We saw Pepsi warn about the consumer. We saw Coke warn about the consumer. We saw everybody warn about the consumer and we saw the VIX at 13 and it was continuing to go up. This morning, the VIX is at 56, okay? It's gotten above 60. That is historic, historic. Look at this 10-year chart of the VIX. The last time it was up at these levels, COVID. That, that was when the world shut down, okay? So we've got something fundamentally in the system that's wrong. It needs to be reset. So again, you can look at this stuff, the economy, it may be slowing. Uh, the SOM rule, we'll go over all of this. We'll go over the, the the recession stuff. We'll go over what to do in your portfolio. The notes I have are not very organized in this. It's kind of like the market. It's a little chaotic. So stick with me through the podcast. I'll kind of guide you through my thoughts. Um, but again, the newsletter, I, I outlined this on Friday. Over the weekend, I, I typed out a newsletter. What about the Mag 7? Which ones are you going to buy now? Um, and, and I said, hey, patience is the key. But you can see the VIX, I said, it, it's flying. The VIX is enormous. When the price of the VIX goes up, the price of the S&P usually goes down. It's inverse. The VIX is an inverse indicator. How does the QQQ chart look? I, I pointed it out. I bought the Qs for my portfolio. Uh, that's where I, I, I manage the portfolio. So what's a normal VIX? 21. We're at 60. Okay. That just means that if you want to know what it means, it's free in the newsletter, this, this description. The VIX is referred to as the fear and greed index. We'll go over the fear and greed index. It's fearful. And when Warren Buffett, here's the thing. Warren Buffett says when people are fearful, you be greedy. When people are greedy, you be fearful. People were greedy. And it, we got the, the sell-off here. And so now people have immediately turned to fearful. Does that mean buy? Well, what did we get from Buffett over the weekend? We got the 13F or the 18K. I forget which one it was, but he sold 50% of his Apple. Okay, 50% of his Apple. Apple is now under $200 at $199. It is down 10%. It's my largest single holding. I, I am probably losing seven figures today. <laughs> uh, it, it, it does not feel good. Am I selling Apple? Probably not. 
you know, you don't want to go into this 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 panic and start selling. You just don't. I pointed out before when you look at a weekly chart of Apple and, and you take a look at this, it's still extended, needed to be reset. This is the great reset. This will take that that MACD down back to the oscillator. It will take the RSI. There are no buyers of Apple even at 200 today. That's the key. Who's buying it? Well, Warren Buffett sold it through this entire period while it was going up. And now all of a sudden, nobody wants to buy it at 199. He was selling over $200. You don't think that that guy's going to start adding uh, unless he thinks we're in a recession. So the, 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 the real key to this is Warren Buffett buying in this market because he's got a record amount of cash. But the economy is slowing. Make no bones about it. It's still strong. The fundamentals are still there. This, what I'm doing with my portfolio is sitting tight today, okay? You don't want to sell. When the VIX is up this high, you don't want to sell on a day when the VIX is this high. Any reaction in the market is an overreaction. More than likely, you will see a bounce back in the coming days. That doesn't mean that the market is going to go higher from here. It just means you will more than likely see some type of bounce back in the market over the next couple of days. But make no mistake about it, this market has turned and it's turned quick. It's fearful. You don't want to buy on the downturn and you don't want, you want to sell on the downturn. But right now I would say it's too much too fast. It's just Citigroup is down 7%. I mean, Bank of America's down at 35. That's almost under 30 again. You know, Costco is down 2%. That's under 800. Eli Lilly is under $800. It's $774. You don't think that Eli Lilly is going to come out with uh, you know a ton of revenue from their weight loss drug, which just keeps getting approved for every uh, capacity that you can think of? That's going to be a crazy, crazy good stock. Now, yeah. The valuations need to be reset. My point here is, don't be fearful. It rocked the global markets. So this is something that the Nikkei pulled back. It was the worst uh, pullback since Black Monday back in 2000, I think, seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. It was just, you know, it's a huge, huge downturn. And and global markets, have, there's a fear of war in the Middle East. I mean, we've still got a lot of things going on with this market, but that VIX is going to be one to watch. And and remember, to play the VIX, you want to look at SVIXY, SV, uh, SVXY, uh, I'm typing SVIX, SVXY and, and UVXY. These are triple levered ETFs. This is the short, uh, short VIX futures, Okay. This one is up, 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 up uh, down 21%. Okay. When the VIX goes up, you want to buy UVIXI. When the VIX goes down, you want to buy SVIXI. So if we look at UVIXI, you are up, let's see, 66% in pre market. 66% in pre market. I, I, I reiterate that. That is a triple levered ETF on, on, on the VIX. And you are up 66%. Again, it could go higher. Even though the VIX is up like 50%, this this particular ETF has been broken a little bit. So even it should be up like 180%. It's only up 66%. But it, to to play the downside, when the VIX comes down, you'd want to play s VIXy. Okay? I'm not going to tell you when to buy it. I'm not going to tell you when to sell it. Am I doing that? No. Because this is equivalent to gambling. Um, you want to trade it on a short time frame. So if you're a day trader, that's a way to do it. Am I betting on this long term? No, because these are decaying assets. I don't want to sit there and hold it. I've learned my mistakes. My mistakes, I, I haven't been patient. Now, if I'm sitting there and I got nothing to do during the day, maybe I'll play as Vixie and you Vixie. Because right now that VIX is clearly way too high. Clearly way too high. So let's take a look at some of the articles you can see. By the way, one of the things I want to point out uh, in QQQ particularly is how to manage a portfolio because this four-hour algorithm is really good and it protects you from days like today. 
Did the uh, four hour algorithm have you into this market here? No, it got you in. Looks like August 1st, 930. It said buy in at 457. But on Friday, it got you out. The afternoon, it said you want to get out. We And I would argue even this one, you didn't have um, a confirmation here. And I said if we were to get below 450 on the queues, that would be a danger sign. Well, where did we close on Friday? We closed at 448. That was a danger sign. And the four-hour algorithm got you out. Now, is it going to get you back in at some point in time? Yes. But the four-hour algorithm, I would say you want to buy with confirmation. I would argue that probably 425 is a support level. We're trading at 426. I would argue that that's the support level. You're under the 200-day. But when you look at the weekly, it's just run too much. And that's the problem. When I looked at these similar ones, I said, hey, what happened? Well, we saw some sidewards trade. We're trading now down. 419 is the the, the the 50 day on the queues. Okay. The last time you had the opportunity to buy under the 50 day was back here in January 2023. And that was at 292. So understand, if you're trading these things, you want to take a look at it. But if you're managing portfolio, I would say the four-hour algorithm is the best way to do that. Because if you are if you want to get in and out of things because you have some fear of days like today, the four-hour algorithm is going to try and protect you from that. Now, it makes you 47%, 47% over 24 months. You make 45% buying and holding. It has you out today. It has you, I repeat, it has you out. You want the four-hour algorithm? Go over to my link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Deli Stock Puck. Now, the top link is TrendSpider. TrendSpider is on sale for today. It's a back to school. They extended it by one day. I wasn't on the air. I wasn't able to say this, but it's a $54 a month for the enhanced. And that gets you, uh, what? let's see, 90 uh, max day alert lifetime, 100 simultaneous alerts. So what I would do for my portfolio, there's no way you have 50 names in your portfolio. And if you do, you're too extended. That's too many names for you to manage as a single person. But you can do it if you have TrendSpider and you have alerts. Because what the alerts do is you can put in a, a buy order for uh, your 50 uh, things, and then you can put in a sell order for your 50, uh, 50 positions. Okay, what that does is it will text you on days like Friday, where in the afternoon at four o'clock when the market closes, it will text you sell QQQQ if you set up those alerts. That's the key to the four hour algorithm and TrendSpider. It is so good. And, and at that point, if you couldn't sleep over the weekend because the algorithm said, hey, and it's back tested and you can't sleep, that's the reason to sell. Boom, four hour algorithm and it's on sale. Again, you're saving over 50%. You're getting six months for free. That's what it, 54. And if you're new to technical trading, this advanced tier, it's it's expensive, 111 bucks. Yeah, it's expensive. You can also pay monthly. You They give you savings over monthly. Sign up for a monthly. Sign up for the enhanced for a month. It's 167 bucks. Get the four-hour algorithm. Uh, you know, if you want the advanced for 295, the, the reason why I say this one, if you're new it's because it comes with free unlimited one-on-one -on -one training, okay? They train you on the tool. You get my algorithm. You get all of the stuff. You get everything that you need in this. We don't want teams. We want for individuals um, because if you're trading with teams, you can buy it as a team. But again, I'd say the enhanced for six months, 54 bucks a month. Now, if you've got a big enough position in QQQ and you didn't get out on Friday, would have saved you 54 bucks this month. Would have been worth it this month, right? Well, when's it going to get you back in? Again, if I'm traveling, you can have this for yourself. This is the best way to manage the portfolio in my mind. So let's take a look at some of the other articles. Again, Sell Off Rocks Global Markets. You can take a look at it. Uh, I want to point out 80% of the companies that reported earnings this week beat profit estimates. That is not a super, super weak economy. That does not justify a 20% pullback. Don't fight the Fed. And when they didn't cut and the jobs market came in weak, that means the Fed. You remember November. You know, if you don't remember, November 20, uh, 2022, I think it was. Uh, no, I'm sorry. November 2021. 
when they didn't cut and the jobs market was exploding and then inflation kind of went up 13%, I think, that month and they didn't raise rates, the market kind of flew. And then when they actually did raise rate, the markets crashed. Okay, that's the term don't fight the Fed. The Fed is making a mistake right now. If they come out uh, and they actually cut based on, on, on you know, the, the current conditions, and, and make no mistake, it's Japan. It's Japan's bond holdings. It's the VIX. It's everything. It's the fear and greed index. People are afraid. This is why Warren Buffett, is, he's got a record amount of cash sitting in Berkshire Hathaway. But 80% of the companies that reported beat estimates. It's just a reset of the multiple. So if you've got these high multiple stocks, what I would do personally is I would probably look at selling them this week, maybe not today, but looking at selling them this week. And if October is the low, then you're out of the 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 um, the the, the uh, water the the shed moment, uh, the watershed rule, whatever it's called, uh, where you can't uh, buy it within thirty. You can buy it back. And if, if this goes on till September or October, you can buy it back at a lower rate. But again, your risk tolerance is different than mine. That's why the four-hour algorithm, it works on all ETFs, all uh, crypto. It reports on crypto. You can buy it on any of it and you can back test it. But I would point out 80% of companies that reported this week beat profit estimates. That's not a weak economy. Let's look at some of the biggest movers. Biggest stock gainer is Kellen Over. Uh, and that's because it's reported that Mars is going to buy them. So it is what it is. Apple plunged more than 7%. It's down 10%. That's because Buffett shocked the market by selling 50%. Make no mistake, and we'll go over this again, it is his, still his largest holding. This was him raising cash. I don't think that he doesn't believe in the stock. I think that the stock is is a little bit extended. If they get an iPhone refresh cycle, the stock value is not overvalued. It is a screaming buy under $200. It is a screaming buy under $200. Bitcoin is under $50,000. I would argue, again, Bitcoin is being sold because, and this is the only reason, because it's a risk on asset. It's not uh, you know, manipulated by, uh, by Fed, the central banks. It is probably one of the best, one of the best hedges against the central bank stuff. And I think, again, I think you should be putting at least 5% of your total net worth into something risky because something risky could be life-changing in 10 years. And 5%, if you lose 5% of your net worth, that's what today is. That's what today is. The Qs are down 4.76. It hurts. But is Bitcoin going to zero? Probably not. So if you lost 5% of your entire net worth, which you may lose today, you very well may lose it today. This is what it would feel like if Bitcoin went to zero if you had 5% of your money in there. More than likely, it's not. More than likely, it's not. So that's why I say, again, crypto, I think, is a good bet for one of those quote-unquote life-changing uh, stocks. Now, the SOM rule. The SOM rule indicator surged to 0.53 in July from 4.43, suggesting the U.S. economy is in a recession. The SOM rule signals, signals a downturn once the employment, unemployment rate reaches 0.5% uh, points above its previous 12-month low. After the unemployment rate to, uh, jumped to 4.3 in July from 4.1 in June, the rule is triggered. Over the last 65 years, there has been a single occurrence, uh, not, not been a single occurrence, where this indicator proved false. Okay, that may mean that we are currently in a recession. That was triggered on Friday. That was a bad thing. Then the news of, of Buffett selling, worst thing. Then the news of Japan's market overnight, worst thing. So you've had this tumbling effect of bad news. We talk about catalysts all the time. There's not catalysts up. And the, the, you know, the, up today, there's nothing in the market that is moving the catalyst up. Everything in the market is moving the catalyst down. So catalysts in the market are moving down. Again, I think we've got more room to go lower. What does that mean? That just means that you start to uh, reposition your portfolio this week. Do you want to raise cash? I would say if you've got losers, take the losers. Uh, you know, If you've got write-offs available in the short term, take the write-offs because you can write those off against some gains. If you've got some big winners, take some of those big winners. But the valuation in this market, I would argue for the long term, is still good. This 
is what the fear and greed index was on Friday. Okay, it doesn't mean it won't go down, but if your time frame is longer, this is the time to buy. But you don't want to buy into a down cycle. You want to buy into an up cycle. That's why I'm saying be a little bit greedy on this one in that you don't want, you know, this could go to zero where where people have zero hope. That's when you'd want to buy. That's when Warren Buffett is just loading back in the market. I wouldn't be surprised if Warren Buffett is today buying Apple in a big way. Might wait till tomorrow, but yeah. Um, This, Dan Niles. If there's one tweet that you're going to read, it's this from Dan Niles. Now, he had a discussion. This is a little bit dated, even though it was Friday. It's a little bit dated, but he goes over long-term prospects of the Mag 7. I base this on my, my weekend newsletter, okay? This newsletter is all about this particular tra- trade. And so I go into my own thoughts on it and my own thoughts. You know, they differ slightly from Dan, but Dan's right on. Dan's right on. A- and I would argue he's right on. So if there's one tweet that you want to read, it's that one. It, it, it will be in the newsletter. Now, this is the VIX versus SPY. And you can see when's the time to buy. Look, I mean, long term... This is clear. Look at the VIX when it spikes. What do you get? You get some, some downturn and some, some pain, but ultimately you get a, an upturn. Okay, the market, we have a strong economy. There is nothing fundamentally wrong with this economy. And, and that's what I want to point out to you. Uh, just so you know, on Substack, on the newsletter, um, the app, I, the, the website's good. But the chat feature, I am using the chat feature a little bit more. I wanted to make sure people know that. So if you get the app, you can get an alert if you've, you're a paying member um, uh, for the newsletter. I am using the chat feature a little bit more to interact with paying members um, so that you can ask me personal questions, you know, one-on-one if you'd like, or you can put it into a group setting, whatever you want. But I am using that chat feature. So if you want the app, uh, I would get the app. Um, I, I just thought that was important to kind of point out. And again, I'm kind of going over uh, my notes here a little bit. Uh, Microsoft got killed. Microsoft got killed. I uh, put that down. I wrote down that uh, Applied Networks or uh, Arista Networks, ANET, not Applied, Arista Networks, ANET. I wrote down earnings were good, under 300, I buy it all day long. Uh, today, it's at 290. It's down 10%. Buy into strength, not weakness. Now, Now, this one right here, I'd have bought this one all day. July 31st at 345. If I were actually, you know, if I weren't in the middle of that travel segment where I was uh, traveling around, I'd have bought this one all day. Glad I didn't. Glad I didn't. It's at 290. You're below the 200 day on this four hour. Last time you got below the 200 day was April at 256. Uh, Again, their earnings justify the valuation. Do you think NVIDIA... Uh, you know, there, there's rumors in, of NVIDIA delaying the Blackwell stuff because of a design flaw, and I think it's got to do with cooling, which is why NVIDIA and SMCI are down 13% versus the market down 10%. This, the valuation makes sense on this one. They are going to record all of the money that you saw Google, uh, Meta, and Amazon spending that took their stock down. Where's that money gone to? It's going to NVIDIA to buy their chips. They have record amounts of Blackwell uh, when Blackwell actually does come out. And if it's delayed till next year, you're going to see those earnings being delayed until next year. But that just means they've got a record amount of orders on, on, on and they'll, they'll go over it. They'll project it and they'll say, we've got a ton. The problem with NVIDIA is it ran up too far too fast. And, and, and when you go to the weekly, it's resetting itself. Look at that MACD, how high it is. The RSI is at 56. Now it's going to open up significantly lower. And 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 at this point, you know, is this October 2022 where you could buy this stock for $10 and it goes to 100? Probably not. But could you buy this at, at you know, somewhere in under $100? It's at 92 and have it pop to 120? Absolutely. The valuation makes sense, but they don't report. M- mind you, they don't report until late August. And if they report that we've had some pullback, remember, chips are very cyclical. So which means that, that they order, you know, months in advance, they could pull back those orders. So even though a company, you know, has ordered it, 
they may pull back those orders. That's all that means. Hey, and if, if NVIDIA all of a sudden sees that, hey, there's enough cute compute power out there and they see that, you could see the stock go down because the valuation's a little bit nuts, but under 100, I'd say buy this one all day long. Uh, I did buy, <laughs> and here's one of the ones that, that I bought, IWM. I, I went in big at $222 a share. Okay, you're at, uh, let's see, IWM is at 198, so I've lost about 10% on this one. I think I bought about twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of this one. Uh, it was, you know, again, I wanted to get this one in uh, before the Fed meeting, as I think they will likely cut rates in September. Uh, I see a rather large move coming in. Either way, I'm betting on Tom Lee, which is one having support at 220. I'll hold until 212. If it dips below that, I'm going to get out. I will get out of this. This was a bad trade. I'm going to sign this off as a loss. I, you know, with with the economy going the way that it is, IWM probably is not the the big trade that I thought it was going to be. Now it's 9:30. We're seeing it open up. The candles are going to start forming here, and you're going to see huge, huge downside. The RSI is at 25. I am not getting out of this today. I will probably get out of this later this week. But I will get be getting out of this trade. Uh, I just think there's bet with the reset of valuations. I think those mega cap techs are a much better buy than IWM at this point. Um, so that those are some of my notes. Uh, let's see the highest uh, volume in QQQ the last twelve months: October twenty twenty three lows, April twenty twenty four lows, and last week. You're going to see this week even bigger. And it's going to be a red candle. I can't imagine that we wind up with a green candle this week. I can't imagine it. I mean, let's go back and look at the weekly QQQ because it's extended. It is extended. And when we go and we look at the weekly on this one, um, you know, the MACD still a little bit high. Look at that little green dot right there. Your MACD, it's reset. It's low on the weekly. Your RSI down to 24. But look at that little green dot down there. That's the current move. Okay, we're, we're actually going positive. We opened up at, let's see, 424. We're at 425. So it's moving up. And, and again, the futures have gotten better because any reaction in the market is an overreaction. I would wait for today to settle out. Now, the weekly candle that you see, again, we had this huge, huge spike. So, but again, my, my point about IWM, my point about a lot of this stuff about QQQ, I've made some bad trades and it's because of patience. And, and we'll go over that in, in kind of the, the education point. Bitcoin crash below, below 50,000. Just buy it. I mean, it's already above 50,000. Let's go and look at Bitcoin versus US dollar right here. It's at 49.753. Okay, this trades, you know, you can buy iBit. What's interesting about this is is that Bitcoin um, versus IBIT, let's look at uh, charting because what I want to do is pull this up against IBIT and we'll select the symbols because some of the, we'll do uh, IBIT and uh, we'll just do IBIT. That's a good enough one because IBIT's the largest ETF. Look at that. Okay. Bitcoin uh, over one year is up 75%. Let's do year to date because I think it the, the um, the uh, they started in January, yeah. So Bitcoin is up twelve percent, but Ibit is up thirty three percent. This one's gonna drop. Ibit, let's see. We're gonna look at Ibit. Let's look at Ibit. Uh, Ibit is down do 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 twenty percent, twenty percent. You know, Bitcoin's down eighteen percent. These are over uh, indexing against Bitcoin. I think that just means that a lot of people panic. You know, these trade on the, on the open market in retirement accounts. I think you got a lot of people who aren't used to the crypto stuff, but when you actually got crypto, they're used to the crypto. So I think they're going to do it. Now, Intel, when a stock shows you uh, who they are, believe it. Intel, do not do anything other than trade Intel. It is not one to buy and hold. You better be trading it on a short thing. So uh, I'm going to uh, talk about Apple now. Uh, because not a time to panic. Web Bush pounds the table for the trade, tread, uh, trade, uh, the tech trade. Uh, Apple revealed its full earnings report for fiscal quarter 2024. The company reported 85.75 billion in revenue during the three-month period, covering April, May, and June. Net profit for the quarter came in at 21.45, and earnings per share at one dollar and forty cents. This marks a new June quarter revenue and earnings per share record. I repeat. 
June quarter revenue and earnings record. That's not a weak economy. The issue with Buffett selling is is that he usually sells um, when when we're in a, a a bull market, okay, and then he buys in a bear market. So far, I don't know that he's showing up, but Apple is over two hundred again. It's at two hundred five. Okay. Am I buying Apple today? No. Am I selling Apple today? No. I'm not making a move. When Buffett starts to buy, he's got a record amount of cash. I don't know that today is the day that he's necessarily buying because again, any reaction in the market's an overreaction. But if this guy sold at two between 210 and 220 and he just takes that money and goes and buys it under 200, dude just made a freaking boatload of money. But you want to take a look at when he starts buying. The, the reason he's a legendary investor is not necessarily for his huge stock picks, which have been very, very good. But he's a legendary investor based on the fact that he kind of reads the economy very well. And he knows when to go in cash. You know, Berkshire Hathaway is down 3% today. It's down 3%. It's at 413. I think I read they have $180 per share. $180 per share in cash. And it's trading at 430. $180 per share in cash. That's crazy. But again, not a time for a sec a tech sell-off. I think it's a it's a buying opportunity, but you want to buy into strength, not weakness. So so look to buy into when these things start to pop, look to, to buy it. Now, I want to talk about Google. Because while I'm talking about Apple, uh, I think Google, uh, in the, the weekend newsletter, just so you know, I said Google was probably the, uh, the the one that I would be very, very afraid of. Now, it's down 4%. It's at 160. You're seeing this candle. It's below its 200-day. It's a great time to buy, always. MACD, super lie, low. Let's take a look at the weekly. Uh, the, the MACD, it still hasn't reset. And the RSI is only at 45. So do you have more downside? Probably. Wait till it gets under the 50-day. Wait till it gets down to the 140s. It probably will. That 151 probably support. So if you want to start adding to it, great. But I want to tell you a great story of what I had happen in Columbus, Ohio with Google, okay? So I, I typically, I drive a Tesla, so I don't use Google Maps all that often. So maybe this is a story that you guys already know about, but I haven't heard this from anybody. So I get done with work at the stadium about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and I want to go to a nearby sushi restaurant. So I'm sitting in the parking lot uh, in my rental car, and I put in the, the sushi restaurant because somebody at the stadium had, had recommended uh, Oshiri. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, best freaking uh, sushi in Columbus. They have this uh, sweet potato roll. Turns out it's my favorite ever sushi roll, but outside of that. So I put in the destination while I'm sitting at the stadium and Google Assistant, which is AI, mind you, it, it is AI. Google Assistant says, there's usually a long wait time at this restaurant. Would you like us to call to find out the wait time? And I responded, yes. Okay. I responded, yes. They said, we will text you the wait time. So it took me about 15, 20 minutes to get to the to the sushi restaurant. And I looked at, when I got back, I looked at my phone and it said, there's no wait time for a table of one because you had to put in your party size. For a table of one, there's no wait time. You can walk right in. We've left your name. So I walk into the restaurant and I get uh, looks because it's one of these like little sushi restaurants. There's maybe five, 10 people in there. It's not many. And, you know, it's, it's got a nice little bar to it. Very nice restaurant, by the way. I, I absolutely loved it. I went there all three nights that, that I worked at the stadium. But um, uh, I walked in. These people thought I was Warren Buffett walking in. They said your personal assistant just called and, and, and we have your table over here. They thought they were talking to a human. Okay. That's how good Google AI is getting. I didn't have to get on the phone. I was simply headed to the restaurant and they made a reservation for me and they, they called back and, and these people thought I had a personal assistant. That's how good Google is. Now, how do you monetize that? I don't know, but I can guarantee you that at some point in time, Google monetizes that. Now, is that copyable by OpenAI? Yes. 
Do they have to, you know, does OpenAI have to to, to partner with some type of mapping, uh, you know, software? Yes. Does Microsoft have a mapping software? No. Guess who's got a mapping software? Apple. If you don't think that this is going to be part of Apple intelligence where you use Apple Maps and then you put in a restaurant and it will alert the restaurant that your party of one is showing up and make a reservation for you where Siri is actually talking, that's what's going to happen. That's the benefit of AI. And it's just a perfect, perfect story of how the big players in this market will continue to innovate and continue to be even bigger. Okay? NVIDIA, off of 92, it's at 97. Just just telling you kind of live on market what I'm seeing. We're seeing a little bit of a bounce back here. But I, that story was phenomenal. Phenomenal. In my mind, I think you continue to buy these big uh, mega cap tech stocks because that's the type of life-changing stuff that they're putting into our lives. And, and uh, I go back to you know rule number one of, of when to buy stocks, you use and love the product and service. That's it. So even though I have an Apple iPhone, Google has crept its way into my life. I use Gmail. I use Google Maps. I like Google Maps more than I like Apple Maps because I haven't figured out how to unsync my watch from Apple Maps. And every time I use Apple Maps, my watch dies. And it's because, again, I just don't want the ringer. I don't want that. So I use Google Maps. It's it's just probably a 10-minute fix for me to figure out. I just haven't done it. So, But that Google AI story was huge. And I think that points to what Dan Ives is pointing out. Not a time to panic. Pounds the table for the tech trade. You want to look into these. The one that I would not look into is Tesla. And that's because I do think that the valuation of Tesla is still extremely stretched. And we can take a look at this. And I pointed this out in the the weekend newsletter. And I know it's for paid customers and I want to keep that alone. But I think it's very important to point out the valuation of this is extremely stretched. Their car business is not growing. Are they an AI company? Is it a long-term bet? Yes. But I think you get back down to 140s on this. Now, at 140s, it makes sense. But they're going to have to grow. I think the Elon hype machine has come out of this market. And so this one, in my mind, is the only one of the the Mag 7 that you don't want to buy. One that you may want to look at buying is Netflix. Netflix has NFL games. Their valuation's a little bit stretched, but their growth, the forward growth, their peg ratio is at 1.1, okay? Their forward growth is still phenomenal. So replace Tesla with Netflix, and this one's under 600. It's under $600, and they got NFL games coming up. Netflix, who's getting rid of their Netflix? And they're, they're cracking down on passwords. But again, with a weak consumer, Netflix might be one that people cut. Who knows? But I think long term, this one makes sense. Um, let's see. Oh, Trendspider. Dan, uh, Dan Ushman is the CEO of Trendspider. Fantastic, fantastic uh, Twitter feed, by the way, because he tweets stuff like this. Earlier this month, we commenced development on a suite of new AI-based capabilities for Trendspider. It will be several months before the beta is out, but let me tell you, it will be unlike anything in the industry. I can't give you specifics here. We're keeping the details close to chest for now, but stay tuned. You'll be impressed for sure. Trendspider, if they employ, right now they, they employ AI in like the, the strategy tester, you could basically go into the strategy tester and say, hey, uh, set me up a strategy that buys on, uh, you know, when the, the eight day crosses the 21 and sell it when the eight day crosses down on the 21. You can do that with chat GPT in Trendspider right now. You can set it up to say, hey, when the MACD crosses the oscillator, sell. When it crosses da- uh, up on the o- oscillator, buy. You could set that strategy up and backtest it. You can say, when the RSI gets to 70, sell. When the RSI gets to 30, buy. You can set that strategy up and and backtest it in TrendSpider. That's how good it is. If they come out with more AI features, and and mind you, if you buy right now, they ain't going to raise your price. Buy it for a year for $650. When it comes out in a couple of months, you're going to have the best AI tool on the market to be able to manage your portfolio. That's how good Trendspider is. And it's one day, again, one day, 
$54 a month. You're saving 45% off of that. You get six months for free. And, and say $54 a month is too much for you to spend. Get the standard of 49. You're still saving 7%, but this one, the enhanced platform, that's what you want to buy for $54 a month. And Dan's tweet right here was key. I, I've been a Trendspider customer since 2020. It has just gotten better. Now, Spy Bollinger Band long strategy enters when price closes the day below the Bollinger Band exits, plus 6% or minus 3%. 80% return on a 14% drawdown over the last 10 years. 10 years. This is a daily chart. Okay. Over 10 years, it enters. Guess where it went in? 542. Let's see where you're trading on SPY right now. Let's go and look at SPY. Just on TrendSpider. Uh, SPY right now is at, do, 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 do. It is at um, 513. 513. Well below that 542. So you can see, sometimes even though this buy comes in, it gets you out with a loss uh, kind of going forward. I would wait, but we're trading below the Bollinger Band. That's big. Now, we went over the five stocks with uh, with if, if Trump wins. We're going over the five stocks if Kamala wins. This is on TrendSpider. Um, these are stocks I never heard of, some of them. Clean Energy, Cannabis. Zeta is one of them. You can look at this article and see the five. This is Steve Kress. He's in charge of the Seeking Alpha Quant. Um, we did get a new uh, alpha pick. If you want alpha picks, again, if you want alpha picks, it is a fantastic portfolio. They had several that 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 popped 40% on earnings. This is up, this portfolio is up 132% versus 46% on the S&P. It's a portfolio of like 20, maybe 25 names. It is a fantastic, fantastic portfolio. The only, how do you get this? Well, you save fifty dollars when you go to my link tree and the third link right here, Alpha Picks. If you want to beat the S and P, Alpha Picks is the way to do it. You get one pick on the first, one pick on the fifteenth, and the difference between this portfolio and others is they set, tell you when to sell. So not only do you buy only on the first and the fifteenth, but they tell you when to sell, and it's not only on the first and the fifteenth. They'll tell you on the third. They'll tell you on the tenth. They'll tell you on the twenty-first. If it's time to sell based on the quant, they will tell you time to sell. If you just want the quant ratings, which again, beat the, the, the S&P 500 based on the quant, and this goes back, University of Kentucky, I think, did a study, then get Seeking Alpha Premium. How do you get Seeking Alpha Premium? It's the second link right here. You save $25, free seven-day trial. So go to any of these, you know, you probably have to upgrade to read this thing. It's worth it. In my mind, totally totally worth it. Um, okay. There's an amazing stat that I'm going to put in the newsletter. And the stat is in 2000, the age of the median company in the S and P was 10, uh, top 10 was 85 years old. So the top 10 in the uh, S and P, uh, 500, the average age in 2000 was 85 years old of that company in 2018, the age of the median company in the S and P top 10 was 33 years old, 18 years and you halved the age of the top 10 companies in the S&P, okay? In 2027, this is how AI is changing the market. In 2027, it's predicted the average uh, S&P 500 tenure, the average S&P tenure, this is two years away, will be 12 years old. If that doesn't mean that some of these small caps, some of these $10 stocks are going to be enormous names. Do you want to invest in small caps? I would say no. I would say, hey, the QQQ, they're going to continue to get bigger. But I do think that some of these small caps will continue to outperform. How do you find them? Well, maybe it's alpha picks. You know, maybe it's the quant. Maybe it's stuff you want to look at. I thought that was an amazing, amazing stat. Amazing stat. Um, the most anticipated earnings, by the way, earnings hub, it's the best earnings site earnings hub is earnings hub.com. I'll have a link for it, uh, in, in the, uh, the newsletter, but the most anticipated earnings this week, Palantir Palantir is coming out. Let's see. It's, uh, I'm not sure where it is, but it's coming out this week. Let's see. Uh, Palantir is coming out. There it is today after the close. <sighs> I don't know that I want to, you know, super micros coming out this week. Hmm. Shopify is coming out. Walt Disney, Uber, him and hers, hims, Celsius, Robinhood, Eli Lilly, Magnite. They're all reporting this week. 
I'd focus on the big picture, not on the little. You know, again, if Palantir posts like record earnings and, and can somehow climb its way back with its earnings, maybe they turn, you know, that they go positive on some earnings and stuff. I think it's a $25 stock. I think $25 is back in this this thing. Do you want to buy it into weakness? No. But in my mind, if you buy here at 20, 22, I don't think you're going wrong. This is a stock that I think is fine to go to 25. And I think maybe today, if they post good earnings, we can take a look at it on Earnings Hub. Uh, let's say Earnings Hub. This is typically how I look at the stock on Earnings Hub. I mean, I don't know the details of Palantir, but they reported $0.08 cents last time. Their estimate this time, $0.08. Cents. They reported $634 million in revenue. They're expected six hundred and fifty two. Now, if that revenue comes in light, expect the stock to absolutely get killed. Absolutely get killed. Again, if you don't beat and raise, you will get killed in this market. The valuation of, of Palantir is absolutely crazy. But the growth is what keeps this one afloat. It's hype. And, and they're selling off today. The peg ratio is still super high. So that you know that that's at twenty five dollars, whatever uh, Friday's close was. You're down seven percent. It's still super high. If they beat today, expect it to pop. Your growth, it is a huge growth company. Their, their revenue year over year seventeen percent. EBITDA growth up thirty five percent. You know again their forward growth on earnings per share eighty seven percent. Leverage free cash flow year over year thirty one percent. Free cash flow per share growth rate, 77%. So it's priced that way for a reason. Expect them, if they beat and raise, to go back to 25. If for some reason they don't beat and raise, say they beat and guide the same way. I don't know. I'd look at that one as as a loss. But Palantir is an interesting one. Super Micro. That's the next one in the core portfolio that's actually reporting. Supermicro is down at 577. This is a steal. This is a steal. This is getting killed because of that delay in the uh in the 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 uh, Blackwell chip with uh Nvidia. It's just going down because it's gone up so much. Now we can look at the weekly. The weekly still a little bit stretched. Still a little bit stretched. But you're seeing it. It's below its 50-day for the first time on the weekly since January, June 2022. Now, what has changed about this company? Fundamentally, nothing has changed. But if they don't deliver on their earnings, this could get killed. This could absolutely get killed. Profitability, D. You know, Again, that's based on their margins. Their margins are, are what's going to, you know, 15%. That's horrible. Horrible. Leverage free cash flow minus 18%. They had to uh, basically dilute shareholders in order to continue to grow. The quant says it's a strong buy. Their growth is A+. plus. They're growing 79% year over year in revenue. Okay. Does that mean that it deserves this kind of valuation? Probably not. But, you know, again, I think if they continue to grow like this and you continue to see earnings, their earnings are August today after the bell, I think. Let's go back to Earnings Hub and see what their expectation is. Uh, Let's see. Is it before or after the bell? Maybe it's, uh, let's look at SMCI. Where is it? We'll just go and we'll search SMCI. SMCI. My apologies about how slow my computer is, but I think there's a ton of people on this thing. Now, they reported $6.65. Their estimate is $8.10. They reported $3.85 billion. Their estimate is $5.29 billion. That's going to be hard to actually beat. Now, they beat it by 13% last time. That's going to be hard to beat, but more than likely, this, this pullback on its valuation means that, hey, they're probably, if, if you believe that they're going to beat, then they're probably going to, you know, going to kill it. But again, they, they, that's a big, big step up. Expect this stock to maybe pull back to probably this 426 or so, somewhere in that neighborhood. But, but again, the MACD has reset itself. We've reset ourselves on, on some of this stuff. So some of these earnings, interesting I don't know that you want to make any plays today. Again, am I buying or selling? No. Education. Most profitable trading systems follow momentum. 
That's what my algorithm does. It follows momentum. It's momentum. It's based on moving averages in the MACD. That's where my algorithm is. Most profitable trading systems follow momentum. And if you want the algorithm, you get it. What you do is you sign up for TrendSpider and then you email me. How do you get my email address? Well, you go over to the link tree. It's right here. DailyStockPick3 at gmail.com. You email me the screenshot of where you signed up for TrendSpider. Again, most new traders focus on the wrong things. Bigger watch lists, more technical indicators, ad monitors, uh, add more strategies, listen to more gurus. In the end, it comes down to having an edge or not. My, my algorithm's the edge. That's what I have. 10 steps to great trading. And this is a great one from Steve Burns. Patience. Uh, number fir First thing is patience. Second thing, patience. Third thing, patience. Fourth thing, entry. F fifth thing, patience, 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 patience. Nine is exit. 10 is repeat the process. Patience is the key. And that's what I learned on some of my trades where I was trading up here with IWM, uh, with CrowdStrike, where I bought at 300, 305, and it's now under 200. Um, you know, some of those buys and even iBit and MicroStrategy. Just, I, I got, I didn't have patience and I need patience. I need to buy at times like today. I should have been raising cash. And that's a learning experience for me. I am very, and I've said it before, I am very bad at protecting my capital. But one thing I am good at is rebalancing and making sure I take the trade on the upside. So I, I lose money, but I don't position myself to actually lose my entire portfolio. I position myself so that during times like this where I'm actually losing money, I can reposition to make money. Okay. If you didn't lose money last week, you're in the top 5% of traders and investors. If you made money, you're in the top 1% last week. That's key. That is key. And, and it doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're one of the best uh, traders or investors of all time because the best traders and investors are probably in the 95% that actually did lose money. That's just it. That's just the fact. Now, uh, here's a great video. I'll include this. This is three things that Ross goes over. This is Ross from Warrior Trading. I think he's a great, great trader. Uh, and, and it's just an educational video. I'll include it in the newsletter. The newsletter's free. That, there's no reason not to sign up for the newsletter. Dailystockpick.substack.com. It's free during the week. The weekend one, I do charge. And that's just to support me, to support my work, because I do put a ton of work into this. But again, this is just, you know, the, the Daily Stock Pick newsletter. I put out that Friday one that I said, hey, what's happening? And, and the five things to watch, the VIX, the seasonality, um, the, the, the bond rates, the weak consumer. I put that out. That's all free. What now? What now? And I put out these charts for free. Every day I do this, okay? Every day for you I do this. And so that's 100% free. Don't feel like you have to you know, pay for something to, to follow me. It's 100% for free. Now let's talk about some scans because there were some buys in the market uh, from Friday. Costco's won. Costco's got a buy here. And it's on the downside. I think it got you in at uh, 8, 816 and you're trading at 800. Does that make sense to buy Costco at 800? Well, if we've got a weakening consumer, there's two places they're actually shopping, and it's Costco and Walmart. And the valuation of, of, of Costco is still crazy. Understand, it's still crazy. The PE on, on, on uh, Costco is 51, okay? Even with the peg, you're still at five on the forward. Their growth can't keep up with this valuation. That's, that's the issue. What I'd rather see you buy is Walmart. Okay, Walmart's growth, they're growing 5%. When you look at their valuation, they're expensive. The PE is 29, make no mistake. Their peg is at three. Uh, that, that's a little bit high. But if you're, if you're going into retail, I'd rather see you buy Walmart than Costco. Doesn't mean that you're going to outperform, but I just think there's a better chance of Walmart actually growing in a recession than Costco. You know, Costco, we've had our catalyst of the membership raise. We've had our catalyst on Costco. I would let it settle down a little bit. Anything under $800, I think you're fine on Costco. But that's a long-term strategy. I think with Walmart, anything under 70 is a good one. If we go and we look at Wall Street's price target on Walmart, their, their price target is 73. That's an 8% upside. I think you're fine. Now, CrowdStrike had a, a cross-up in the algorithm. Is it one that you want to buy? Absolutely not. Even though the algorithm said buy, we've still got weakness in this name. Okay, CrowdStrike 
Uh, the algorithm says buy at 217.96. You're trading at 218. Is this the bottom? I would say no. I would say look at that. I'd rather see you buy at 250 than buy at 217. And and the reason is because at 250 you're starting to fill these gaps and you're on the upside of the nine day. You have confirmation. Now this the volume is there for this stock. The volume is there. It's the uncertainty of this one. CrowdStrike's in it, one to buy. Now, we did have a sector cross-up, which ironically is XLP. This is consumer staples. Weakening consumer. I don't know that I'd necessarily buy this one, but you were buying at 77. You're at 78 right now. It's got a second leg. And it, you know the, the, the MACD's not extended. The RSI kind of coming off of oversold stuff, but it's an upward trend. Now, when we look at the weakness, uh, the, the weekly of this one, it's got confirmation and it's in that upward trend. So again, XLP, a little bit extended, but the, the algorithm saying, hey, it may have more room to go. We've got J&J, we've got Procter & Gamble, we've got PDD and we have ISRG. Those are the last scans. It's been 55 minutes I've rambled on. Hopefully I've made you feel a little bit better about this. Uh, Oshiro Sushi is uh, O-S-H-I-R-O is in Columbus. Uh, you can tell them that the, the soccer guy sent you if you're in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, it, it was by far, I think the Gary combo is what I, I like to call it. It was the Columbus roll and the summer roll, I believe. Those are the two rolls that I had if you go into uh, Oshiro Sushi in uh, in Columbus, Ohio. It was phenomenal. Uh, and I really, really liked the, the restaurant. And you can tell them the soccer guy sent me over here from the podcast. They don't know that I have a podcast. They just think I'm a soccer guy. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. Again, don't wait on the Trend Spider sale. It is a 50% savings. It's a great way. If you can't, if if you if you're gonna lose sleep because of the money that you lost tonight, the algorithm had you out of of most names. The algorithm had you out. You know, again, if you listen to the algorithm and and, and you t- take a look at these things and, and and you want to just trade things, again, the algorithm got you in on Apple at 219. Did it get you out? No. But I would have said you're on the the lower side of that nine day. There's no reason to buy on a Friday. No reason to buy on a Friday. Your MACD, I think you'll be fine in Apple at 209. You know, again, this was trading at 197 earlier this morning. I think people are buying the dip. But again, if you if you bought last week or if you bought the week before, patience wasn't there. I would expect more downside. Let me be clear. I expect more downside. I would be using this time to absolutely uh, re- redo your portfolio. Take advantage of some wash sale rules. Okay, take some losses. If you're in a in a, in a stock that you're down twenty percent on, take the loss because I guarantee you, you will be able to buy it back at this price or just a little bit higher in thirty days. We are not going to see a rip roaring rally in the next thirty days. Take the loss. Write the loss off. If it's in a retirement account, take the loss, reposition your portfolio. Because if you've got losers in this market, there are clear winners. Apple, Amazon, uh, Costco. Uh, well, I'm not, Costco's in the core portfolio, but Bank of America at 36. It, it, you know, Google at 163. Eli Lilly at 776. Meta under 500. That was trading at 450 earlier this morning. Microsoft. At 395, Microsoft under 400, killer. Netflix was under 600. It's already over 600. And NVIDIA back over 100. At 101, that's a steal if they report. Pan W is under $300. That's a fantastic buy. Qualcomm at 159. It is, it is up in today's market. I have no idea why. Roblox at 36. This is under 40. You'll be able to buy it again. Shopify at 51. If you've got losses in Shopify and the consumer is weakening, I'm a little bit worried about Shopify. And 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 it's because yes, I think it's an $80 stock. Yes, I think it comes back up. But that that 200 day, that 50 day, everything is moving negative on Shopify. It might be time to take the loss. Okay? Depends on your situation, but it might be time to take the loss. Maybe time to move into something and when Shopify actually starts to gain some strength, you can rebuy it. But again, there are opportunities in this market. It's coming back. 
Do you want to do anything today? I would say no. I would say wait at least a day. Let's see what happens tomorrow. The, the, the overreaction may, be, may just be an overreaction and we might start to see things move because again, some of these indicators like the MACD, like the RSI and like the moving averages have been reset and they're, they're telling you, hey, the economy is not horrible. The 10 years at 3.7, that's an enormous down move. No, your two years at 3.8, we have reset the inversion. So it, it, again, it, there, there are issues with the market and, and, and those four things, you want to take a look at the VIX. The VIX is going to be a clear indication of when we, uh, when we start to come back. When the volatility, you know, you're already down at 40. You were at 60 earlier today. You were at 60 earlier today. You're at 40. You know, we, we can look at uh, SVIXI because SVIXI was down 60%. Uh, let's see. Uh, as Vixie is now down only 10%. That's a huge move. I mean, let, let, let's look at this one. This one opened up at 39. It's at 44. You know, the volatility is coming down. So that's the key is, is I think there, there's level heads in this market. Doesn't mean that you go out and buy. Just means you, you've got to take the time to understand that this is the volatility in the market that we have. It's an election year. And I think you start to see a bounce back. So, but that bounce back may not be this week. That bounce back may be next week. I'm just going to position my portfolio. If you have any questions, hit me up. Don't forget the Trend Spider sale. Uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. See you, bye. Morning, I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily. Don't miss a single show. Sign up for the new. And fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter, let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer, no room for any less. Listen now.